Well, for me to uh, introduce our speaker today, I think he just really needed an introduction because if you read your or want to borrow a magazine or read anything to do with history, Mr. Keller is on there in big print and quite rightly so. Um, I had the pleasure of attending Sands' um, conference. Uh, nobody else would bother to come with me, but it was a, an exceptional one, and I would promote that in future you consider conferences because you do get a true insight into how the district works and how hard the district government has to work just to stand still with it. Um, it is indeed for me a great pleasure to introduce that to the club, um, and uh, I'm sure you have a few very wise words. Thank you. Thank you. I always like to get a bit of a clap at the beginning because you don't know what's going to happen at the end. <laughs> um, so we're, we're now a third of the way through, or more than a third of the way through this rotary year. And uh, when I brought out my first uh, PG bulletin, it was under the headline, Hitting the Ground Running. And it was certainly that. And if you see the, uh, the program that I'm still doing, I'm doing sort of average five visits every five visits or meetings every single week. But uh, I am enjoying uh, that aspect of it. It's going around and meeting the clubs and the club rotarians, which is the best part of the, uh, the role of the district governor. Um, so apart from the, uh, the other DG club visits, um, I've been to some handovers. I went to the RIBI handover. I went to the final of the Colchester Dance Competition. Now, I know that there's events like this all around the district, um, and uh, I would thoroughly encourage you to go, because I felt that I've missed out over all the years. It, it's open to anybody, but uh, the enjoyment that the kids got and the satisfaction that the club Rotarians got, um, it, it was fantastic to see. And, you know, similar things are going on, uh, uh, you know, examples such as all the youth activities we do. The standard is so high, so I would really urge you to, to go along to these things. I went to the funeral of the past district governor, David Lee, some months back. Um, David was the district governor of the year I was club president, and it was David um, who introduced me into uh, onto the district team, and that was back in the Rotary Centenary year. Um, Sometimes you get weekends off for good behaviour, but not always. There's general council meetings. I'm the liaison governor for marketing, PR, and communications. Uh, I went to the V Festival where we did the bottle exchange for um, uh, for polio. Uh, that, that was a, a fantastic event. Uh, but just looking around the crowds, I just felt that I'd arrived approximately 50 years too late. <laughs> uh, I went to the uh, we found this bike ride, uh, went around the island, there were 1,200 riders. I didn't find it particularly difficult, but I was in the back of a Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> Last Sunday, uh, I, I laid a wreath on behalf of District 1240 at the Colchester Remembrance Day, and I, and I read that so uh, you, you, know, you had your own Remembrance Day. And it's important uh, that Rotary is recognised uh, as an integral part of each community. Uh, as I go around, each club is different. I've been to two clubs where they've got presidents who are just 25 years old. Uh, and that's quite unique, really, to have two 25-year-olds two in the same district at the same time. On the other hand, I went to one club who's got the oldest president in the district. He's 92. So I guess there's no substitute for experience either. But uh, So I try to find something different to say about each club, you know, a unique selling point. So, uh, and it, of course, having done 50 odd of these now, it gets increasingly difficult. But uh, uh, the um, Hornchurch and Upminster Club, I can tell you, have got the most videos of any club on their website. And if I'm being videoed today, then I think I'd better stand up straight or try to stand up straight. <laughs> you are being videoed. I am. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Rotarians being a caring bunch of people, they're, they're, they're concerned that with all these bills I'm invited to, that uh, I'm going to put on weight. But I've got this theory that uh, whilst I'm not in the house, I can't be raiding the fridge. So in fact, at the end of the period, I've actually lost weight. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know how the diet's going in a couple of months' time. But uh, bearing in mind I've got another dinner tonight, then maybe, it's, maybe, maybe today will put me back a week or two. Um, at PEPS and District Assembly, I promised I would be wearing a theme jacket. 
this is the theme jacket, it's not something that's just found at the back of the wardrobe. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, uh, there's a bit of a saga to the jacket. Normally speaking, you, you, you buy them um, yourself, you know, some will say you pay through the nose. And, but in, in San Diego, they, they make this big announcement of what colour the jacket's going to be, and the next day you should find it hanging up in your wardrobe. We were told then that there will be a slight delay, and three and a half months later they still haven't turned up. But uh, I was literally the first person in the country to get the jacket, but when I tried it on, I'm sure it was destined for somebody else. So I'm looking for a fellow DG with a slightly longer front and a back and a wonky shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get over it by standing just at a slight angle and nobody can tell the difference. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it'll look good on the video anyway. <laughs> now, as, far as, the, as far as the flashy foundation tie goes, I mean, word got out about that. I went to one club recently, and they all turned up in the most garish neckwear you anybody could imagine. And I went to another uh, club, and when they saw my tie, they all promptly took theirs off. But <laughs> so, the three years since I was elected as district governor, it was passed in a flash. Um, so now I'm ready, hung to perfection, like an Olympic athlete peaking at the right time. I. I've been to webinars and seminars, forums and assemblies, training sessions and workshops. I've read the two-inch thick DG manual. I've been to San Diego, I've been to Birmingham, I've been to Milton Keynes. So I'm ready now to tell you what, uh, what, we're to, what to focus on. The theme for the year, as you all know by now, is Light Up Rotary. I said Light Up Rotary last week and six went out for a cigarette. That's <laughs> It's actually a, a call for action for Rotarians to engage in more projects and raise public awareness of all the great things that Rotary does. When you illuminate something, you make it more visible. And that's what we have to do to the public and to a certain extent to club Rotarians as well, to explain why we're the leading service organisation in the world and how we make a positive difference to the lives of so many other people. It's not surprising that the emphasis remain membership, and foundation and publicity. Polio eradication remains our number one goal. When we were in San Diego, we had confirmation that India had been polio free for three years and was therefore non endemic. That gave us great encouragement. On the other hand, we all hear the stories about immunizers being killed in Pakistan. So there are major obstacles still to overcome. But we are confident that we will uh, eradicate polio and the target is still 2018. Uh, Rotary fundraising will continue to be matched two to one by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This year, clubs will be working hard to achieve the presidential citation, and I've also introduced the district citation to recognize the endeavors of all clubs. The presidential citation is particularly onerous this year. So much so that just last week I had a, a letter from the RI president, Gary Wang, um, telling me that uh, they've changed the criteria to make it slightly more achievable. It's still difficult, but at least somebody along the line has listened and, um, that they, and it's perhaps possible now. Beforehand, it was, it was not only possible to get one. Uh, the district citation, citation, I hope that all clubs will, will get one of those. It's not to say that it's devalued in any way. It's just a way of saying thank you to, to the clubs for all, all the projects that they're doing. And it shows that uh, we are being active as Rotarians. We're also asked to look at uh, Rotary Days. Um, now, in this district, I think we already do Rotary Days, and, and the examples I cite include the uh, uh, Bitteriki Christmas Market and the Mandatory Flash Mob. Um, Rotary Days have got to be uh, inexpensive, fun, family orientated, and raise awareness of what Rotary does. I had an idea for a district Rotary Day, and that is to get ourselves in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most number of people at a quiz in one place at the same time. And I've now agreed with South End United Football Club that we can hold it there, and the date will be the 6th of June 2015. Uh, the record is two, there's about two and a half thousand we need to beat the record. Um, I had a meeting last night, and uh, details will be coming out soon, but I'm hoping that 
all clubs, because we all like our courses, so I'm hoping that all clubs through the district will support it. As a district, we're also investigating a global grant proposal for sending a cow to Kenya. That's not exactly as it sounds on the team, we're not posting Frisians to Nairobi, but it's a project to help Kenyan farmers. Now, there doesn't seem to be any shortage of ideas in the district, and some take a while to come to fruition, some are short and sweet. And, uh, but I'm hoping that this is something that we will work together on. Another project that uh, we're looking at is Giggle Doctors. Uh, that they cheer up sick children in hospitals. At, at present, they're working in uh, Chelmsford, Broomfield Hospital, but uh, perhaps we can extend the idea to other hospitals in the district. Giggle Doctors uh, presented at the district conference in Stratford upon Avon, and it's, it's strange to think that that was two months ago now. Time just goes. Um, there were lots of inspiring speakers, and uh, I thank Brian for supporting it. <coughs> Going to a district conference gives you a wider perspective of Rotary, so I, I would urge you to, to think about going, whether it's to next year's or the RIBI conference, which is going to be in uh, Belfast. Um, the final session of the district conference and the uh, district council meeting on the 27th of September, we, we also had some very good speakers there. and. Um, I think that to encourage people to go to district council meetings, I've asked for involvement of clubs. Because um, I think that if you go to, bearing in mind that the reports are circulated in advance, I don't think it's very good for um, you know, somebody to get up and say, report has circulated, and somebody goes, hey, and you know, a big cheer, and there a bit of applause, because I think, well, why bother to turn up? So, consequently, I've asked clubs um, for what, if there's any project they want to. Um, talk about themselves, what sort of speakers they want to hear, and, uh, and general involvement. And at the next district council meeting on the 9th of uh, December, we've got three excellent speakers. One lady is um, coming all the way down from Edinburgh, specifically for us. I've heard her speak before, um, and she's very inspiring. So for no other reason than that, it's, it's well worth turning up on the, on the evening. I also asked for input for um, the district uh, from the RIBI President's uh, visit, which is the 27th and 28th of January. But I want to involve the clubs. I mean, I'm push, pushing together the programme, um, and I hope that uh, all clubs in the district will support it. I just wanted to say a few words in passing on redistricting or restructuring. Since the General Council considered this last year, there's been a reassessment of the requirements. At the present time, there's 29 districts in RIBI. Under phase one, which was agreed, that will reduce to 26 in 2017. There are five districts talking to each other, and they may merge or amalgamate and reduce by a further two or three districts. District 1240 is not talking to anybody. So, <laughs> so what that means is that there will be no changes at all to, uh, to 1240. At one time, it looked like we would be disbanded, and the clubs, like the one of the Havering clubs, would go in one direction, um, the Hertfordshire clubs would go in another direction, and uh, we would be, we would just uh, disappear. The fact is that it's no longer on the uh, agenda at General Council, and uh, we will stay as we are. So I think that is good news. <coughs> on Foundation, uh, we're all asked to make a personal donation to Foundation, which is Rotary's own charity. Because in simple terms, if we don't collect the money in, we can't distribute it for all the uh, wonderful projects that Rotary supports uh, worldwide. And not just worldwide, some of these are, are, are national and, lo and local. Um, when we were in San Diego, the RI president, he, he asked us, I think asked is the right word, all the DGEs that we were at the time um, to make this personal donation. And on the first day he came in and said, well, there's still 276 of you who haven't contributed, and the next day 76. Anyway, we got there, and he said, between us, we've collected $800,000. That's it. Um, now, they only introduced that idea last year, and last year they became the first class. We didn't want to be second class, so we became best class. We've got one of these magnificent tin badges, so there's an incentive for it. Um, <laughs> 
And somebody stood up and said, well, $800,000, that's not far of a million dollars. And lo and behold, the next day it had gone up to a million dollars. And by the time we left, it, it had risen to $1.2 million, which is phenomenal. But at the same time, to me, that smacks a bit of checkbook rotary. And that's not what we do. We, our emphasis in this country is on service, and I think that's right. But nevertheless, if we made a nominal contribution, whether it's a five pounds or whatever, uh, that would make a significant difference to what Rotary is able to do. This other badge, by the way, this blue one, when I said I've got a blue badge, somebody thought it was something to do with free parking. <laughs> you, you get one of these if you sponsor a, a, a new member, and they also come in uh, bronze, silver and gold. So if you happen to see somebody with a gold one, they're probably are worth shaking their hands because they've introduced quite a, a number of people. Now, Horn Church and Upminster Rotary Club does some wonderful things in the local community. You've given donations to St Francis Hospice for a sponsored walk and the Cranham Community Association Hall. And uh, you recently contributed towards a new computer for Sue's House, the so Cancer and Holistic Centre. We've got many fundraising events, including race nights, jazz nights, uh, the Santa collections, and much of the funds raised goes to other local charities and good causes. So you are part of the local community. You've got an annual theatre trip for the elderly, you've got a, uh, supporting the Cockney Nights coming up, and your twin club in Germany, a much skilled Bundtruck, is particularly successful that association, not just from this social aspect, but also working together um, for um, uh, international projects such, such as you had in Brazil and Sri Lanka. Working in collaboration with other clubs and other organisations is seen as the way forward because projects are getting bigger and more expensive. Um, Rotary is not all about money, however, and uh, one example of what you do is the uh, blood pressure days and stroke awareness days. I like your data link bottles, which has the added benefits of uh, excellent PR uh, at Queen's Hospital. I'm not sure if you still produce the ball. Um, that's the, the largest club uh, magazine or bulletin. I used to print that for you at one time. But I don't know whether it's uh, online these days. Couldn't find a, a recent edition. Um, there's lots going on in this club, and uh, in fact, your program is booked up until right to the uh, end of the rotary year. So, very well done on that. At the present time, though, there's no getting away from the fact that uh, rotary is generally an aging organisation. So we've got to keep trying to find new ways of bringing in new members and younger members. Perhaps through your connections with schools, you can encourage parents to become involved. Uh, remember that every Rotary event is an opportunity to promote your club. I can suggest you look at associate members, friends, corporate membership, uh, get people to dip their toe into the water. Word of mouth is still the best method of recruitment, but retention is more of a problem than recruitment. Last year, Rotary recruited 100,000 new members, but they lost 100,000 members. The situation in RRBI is worse. We recruited 1,500, but we lost considerably more than that. So we've got to find ways of halting the decline, to find out why members are not staying. We sell it on the fact that we are an organisation that makes things happen, but when a new member comes along, they've got to be involved, we've got to show that we're active. They need mentoring, they need to go on committees, and uh, I think the more active a club is, the more likely they are to stay. You're asked to put your uh, data on the RI website and the Rotary Central. There's also another part of that Rotary Showcase, which is exactly as it sounds. You showcase your achievements, what your projects, and you pick up ideas from other clubs. If bungee jumping's going well in New Zealand, perhaps it's time you try it in Paul Church. I don't know. But anyway, it, it's there. Um, the RIBI website was relaunched about six, six, seven weeks ago, and the district website um, is also pretty good these days. So all three websites are a great resource for anything rotary. And incidentally, the RIBI website is um, being renamed RotaryGBI.org. Uh, 
And the reason behind that is because we're trying to promote Rotary, and yet we keep talking about this ribby thing, which means nothing outside this room. Um, so that's one of the subtle changes that, that's going on. Did you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, so Rotary GBI, that's short for Great Britain and Ireland. We actually had to wait for the referendum in Scotland before we could <laughs> go with that panel. Um, but keeping websites up to date is vital in this day and age. And social media is the preferred medium for many of the younger generation. So using it gives you another opportunity to inform the public if it's another string to your bow. And of course, I know that Colin's going to speak to you shortly. Because I, you know, I can see that you're very active now on, on Facebook. I introduced the idea of the Stan Kelly Trophy for Best Club website long before I thought about standing as district governor. Because in today's fast-moving world, having a, a, a website up to date uh, is, is just um, is just vital. Uh, it's so fundamental to any business or organisation. But above everything else, you have to enjoy belonging to your club. Um, because why would you want to be a member of a club uh, if you didn't like going? And I can see you know, that you do enjoy each other's company and, it, and there's a, a, a good atmosphere here and a lot of friendship. So for now, I wish Ray good luck for the year as club president. Ray is the perfect example of recycling. <laughs> We're still relatively near the start of the year. And then it's disposal. <laughs> so we've still got fresh enthusiasm and vigour. So let's look forward to the rest of the year ahead and light up road trip. Thanks very much. Thank you, Stan, for a, a very interesting and amusing talk to us. Um, Mr. President, will I just interrupt you for a second to say the coffee's over here ready if anybody wanting it. Thank you. Particularly with the, the broader picture of uh, Rotary in 1240. It, it, we hear about these things in, in snatches, we get the magazine, but it's nice to hear it from the fountain head, if you like. I was going to say the horse's mouth, but <laughs> the fountain head is better. <laughs> Um, I can call worse names. Well, <laughs> I haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming in to know that there will be no change in District 1240. It, it uh, has been mentioned quite a bit within the club of uh, what is going to happen and all sorts of rumour control kicked in. And it's, it is comforting to know that uh, we stay as we are for the time being. We do have a mentoring system, um, I think myself and, uh, was it you? Uh, One name was mentioned. Yeah, Ray Hamilton, yes. Uh, if any new member comes along, then we do take it upon ourselves to speak to them and uh, tell them what we're about, and uh, because when they walk in, they haven't a close at the time, and uh, sometimes we, when we walk out, we haven't a close, but, uh, but there we are. The publicity angle, it, it's... For a while, I thought we publicise Rotary to Rotarians. We tell them what a good job we do, but we tell, we tell 1240 magazine, which goes out to the converted. It should be like a party political conference. We don't seem to have a system whereby the publicity is to the, the broader world. Now, I know we, we did have problems with our guy who was doing this with the uh, publicity man, but that was a medical reason, and we managed to get around that, and we started picking the pieces of it. But we do need to think more about telling people outside the world of Rotary that there is a Rotary world. But anyway, enough, I've said enough. Stan, excellent talk. Thank you very much. And those who would like to show our usual appreciation.